Head of U.S. Central Command Kenneth McKenzie says Iran possesses one of the most capable militaries in the West Asia region. McKenzie was addressing the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee. He said Iran's offensive capabilities include nearly short and long-range ballistic missiles, as well as an array of land attack cruise missiles. The top general said Iran's ballistic missile force is the most formidable in the region. On Tuesday, McKenzie testified before the U.S. House Armed Services Committee. He said Iran's widespread use of small and medium-sized drones means the U.S. is operating without complete air superiority for the first time since the Korean War. Iran has time and again stated that its military capabilities are merely defensive and are designed to deter foreign threats. Well, let's discuss this a little bit further with uh, Mr. Jason Andro. He's a political commentator who comes to you via Skype out of Ontario. Uh, Jason, mm, it's good seeing you. Tell me your understanding of this, and uh, why do you think he had to actually go and address the U.S. Senate Armed Services Committee with actually commenting on Iran the way he did? I think that his decision to address the Oh, well, the, the public version of the government the way he did was I think that he has a growing concern. He wouldn't have done this unless he felt that there was some kind of threat to U.S. hegemonic power in the region. So I think that what he's doing is he's sending a message to the U.S. government that they're not prepared to deal with the missile technology that Iran has right now. And I think that that's basically what he's saying. They have to have a countermeasure for it. As we saw previously after the assassination of Soleimani and the missile strikes that took place in retaliation, the United States was not in any position to stop them whatsoever. They were completely vulnerable to those missile attacks. And I think that that has something to do with it. There's been a lot of talk in the United States about defunding the military or shifting a lot of the funding away from the military and towards things that people need, like health care and education. Now, this is still pretty much, in, in, in my view, a pipe dream, but something that I would, I would think that a lot of the war hawks inside of the government and the Pentagon would be worried about happening. Now, I think that this is also a product of the ongoing situation between the two countries. Uh, to me, it's very clear that the United States is trying to instigate Iran further by not returning to the JCPOA that they could that they could do overnight easily and, and turn. And I think that's very much tied up with the fact that this is about intimidating Iran and trying to force them to make a certain decisions, uh, trying to uh, force them to make certain concessions which are unnecessary and frankly unethical in this situation and allowing uh, Israel a free hand to do damage, et cetera. So I think what they're really saying is that he, he's saying that there's a vulnerability in U.S. power. Now, we do know previously, uh, in 2002, there was what was called the Millennium Challenge. It was a military simulation done between uh, U.S. Navy forces inside the Persian Gulf against Iran. And in those simulations, every time, the United States lost the battle. Now, this is going back, you know, quite a long time now. This is going back almost 20 years. Now, obviously, uh, missile and rocket technology of, of Iran has significantly improved since then. I think he's sending a message that they're not prepared for an actual military confrontation. I think that the main obstacle is Iran's ability to launch missiles and rockets as a form of self-defense. Mm -hmm. uh, Jason, there is also the, um, the timing of this. Uh, you know, I was just thinking that maybe, perhaps, you know, he's trying to send a signal to their negotiating team in Vienna that basically these days they go back and forth to Vienna to discuss the JCPOA, that... Uh, Hey, you guys, if you want to discuss something with the Iranians, you know, there is this area of their air superiority as well. Maybe try to include that in your negotiations with them. Do you think this might have a little bit of an implication towards that matter? I think it might definitely be that way, too. I think this could also be a signal to the negotiation team to say, to bring up the issue of Iran's missile uh, uh, missile technology in terms of negotiations, rather than just simply returning to the agreement as they should, and uh, Biden previously said that he would. I think that some of the new conditions that they're trying to force on Iran may include missile technology, reduce the ability of Iran to use missiles to defend itself in case of 
uh, in, in case of an invasion, even though it's already been highly recognized that the, the missile technology is not against is not against the law. It's not against domestic law. It's not against international law. This is something the United States would want to undermine Iran's ability to defend itself. But the main goal, uh, allegedly, was to keep nuclear weapons out of the hands of Iran, which would be absolutely uh, devastating for the United States if Iran actually got a hold of them, which they have, uh, Iran's made very clear that, that, that it's not a goal that they have. However, the missile technology is proving to be a major obstacle as well. And part of the, the previous JCPOA agreement was to perhaps, perhaps undermine Iran's ability mm. to do, develop that kind of technology by harming the economy, but that's not taken place. So I think that this might be a signal to the forces to start bringing up Iran's missile technology in terms of uh, kinds of uh, agreements that could be made with the new JCPOA. Now that he's speaking publicly about this, I wonder, Jason, if he's sending any signal to other regional countries as well. Oh, yes, I think that's that's probably a very good possibility, too. He could be signaling to Israel to uh, bump up its uh, missile defense technology, uh, could be sending the same uh, the same message to Saudi Arabia. Hey, look, yeah, I, I, they, are, they have this capability. And if something were to happen and a war in the region breaks out, this would be an advantage that Iran has and that you need to start planning to make sure that you can deal with this in, in the case that uh, this, uh, God forbid, turns out into like an entire uh, m m Middle Eastern war. So I think that there, there's a good chance that they're sending that message to their allies there as well. All right, many, many thanks. That's uh, Mr. Jason Andro. He's a political commentator who came to you live via Skype out of Ontario. It's always good to see you and talk to you, Jason. Take care.